वेलकम टू कर्टन रायसर एट नाट्य दर्पण माय नेम इज अशोक चौधरी प्रेसिडेंट एंड फाउंडर ऑफ इंडियन हेरिटेज एंड कल्चरल एसोसिएशन ऑफ न्यू जर्सी अ नॉन प्रॉफिट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एस्टैब्लिश इन 2013 टू प्रमोट यूएस बेस्ड लोकल टैलेंट इन परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स सच एज थिएटर म्यूजिक एंड डांस सिंस टू थाउजेंड वी हैव बीन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग multilingual short play festival where us based local talented theater groups perform mind blowing short plays in variety of different languages such as hindi english marathi bengali uh, gujarati and kannada this is our 8th year of multilingual short play festival our 8th natya darpan is scheduled on august 20th 2023 at milsk Middlesex College. We have selected six mind-blowing short plays in Hindi, English, and Marathi. In today's Curtain Rises episode, we will be discussing with one of the director of play, Law for the Entitled, Mr. Anand Rao. And to do to do that, we have host Dr. Manoj Shahane, a physician by profession. Manoj is known to New Jersey and US artists as an actor, director, and writer. He has performed numerous times at Natya Darpan and other festivals. Some of his uh, work has been awarded and accom- uh, accompanied by a lot of critics, theater critics. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Manoj Shahane. we also have in studio mr anand rao anand rao came from a kannada theater he has established actor director and writer his professional plays uh, were performed in many cities in india as well as in usa welcome anand to manoj shahane take it away Thank you, Ashok Ji, for the kind introduction. Uh, welcome, Anand, uh, to the Curtain Riser for 2023 Natya Darpan. Um, I know you are actors couldn't make it today uh, for the short notice that we had given you, um, but I would love to talk to you about uh, your new play. Um, I know you have an extensive exper- experience in different theater. uh i think it's in canada mainly english hindi um let's talk about you first what is what is the most favorite thing if you'd say for your um if somebody says let's do a play would you do that in canada would you do that in hindi in english what would you say to uh, somebody oh uh, manoj thank you very much for having me here man it's a pleasure to be chatting with you uh you know i in fact uh, i don't do any hindi plays at all my hindi is very bad uh, so i uh, english and kannada are the two languages i am comfortable with and uh, those are the two languages i do theater in and as far as a preference is concerned i don't really think i have a preference as long as i am given a context you know if if i have the context then maybe i could uh, pick uh, according to the appropriateness of the context and the cultural relevance as to uh, what, which language would be better okay. uh, but the last two plays that i have directed both of them have been adaptations one of mm-hmm. them from uh, english to kannada and uh, this one is from kannada to english so okay. i really don't have a choice because those are the only two languages i know and uh, i'd love to do theater in both those languages okay. what what do you think the kannada theater industry or like this example let's not go into the 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 context of the play because let people come and enjoy the play yeah yeah uh, i've i've heard a lot of things from your actors uh, one of comments and uh, when i talk to them because i know some of them and they cannot uh, they cannot stop talking about the context of the play uh, and so on and so <laughs> in terms of what draws you from you know why would you get something from kannada theater uh and adopt in english what did you see especially in this play without going into details that made you think that i must do this in english 
for the audience here? What was the draw? Oh, well, for me, I studied English literature in college. And uh, while I studied English literature in college, I did a lot of Kannada theater outside because of the college that I attended to in Bangalore, uh, it was heavy, it had a very heavy theater culture and mostly to do with Kannada theater. So uh, for me, my education was all about English literature in the class. But once I stepped out, it was all about Kannada theater. Mm -hmm. So I developed this very uh, inclusive mindset uh, for theater. And uh, uh, so comparing uh, the cultural nuances and the literary nuances and, and trying to figure out how we could adapt to uh, either one of them was something that was imbibed to me very early, thanks to that experience. Uh, and about this play in particular, uh, um, uh, well, I presented this in Canada when uh, Natya Darpan was virtual mm -hmm. uh, during COVID. Uh, it was called Vibrations at that time. And uh, I presented this, uh, the original, it's titled the Sampad Dharma, Sampad Dharma by Sri Ranga, which I presented it um, in Canada. And I realized that was the first ever Canada play to make it to a multilingual theater festival in the U.S., which was a big deal and I did it and then I yeah, the appreciation that came my way usually uh, Sri Ranga is considered to be a very um, complex playwright not many uh, people even in the Kannada language like to take on Sri Ranga's plays uh, but it was very well received when I did it here and uh, Ashok in particular was uh, very much impressed by it and he wanted me to do it in English mm -hmm. and he told me if you could do it and then I uh, I sat and looked how it would feel if I wrote, wrote those dialogues in English, and they, they seem to flow pretty well. So I thought, you know, it should be a very relevant theme. The theme is very relevant. It's very contemporary. It is something for all time and age. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would um, be an interesting challenge to take on. Oh, that's, that's very good to hear. So I obviously, I know the difference, but for the people, for the audience that we have in a different forum, if you can kind of walk us through what is the difference between the translation and the adaptation of a play because this is a very interesting um, topic for the play that you have chosen and mm -hmm. when you adapt a play in english um, can you tell people that it's not just a translation because you have to change your uh, kind of the set of virtues and values that you're bringing into english so for the people who are not very familiar with it can you kind of in brief kind of walk us through what is the difference? It's it's generally the difference what you would find when you're translating two literary pieces mm -hmm. from one language to another, all right? So it's exactly uh, a lot of localization of content is necessary along the uh, language itself. How are you going to treat the language? Mm -hmm. Because uh, be it Kannada or be it any Indian language, you know, brings with its own uh, uh, you know, uh, timeliness and it's got a periodic reference which we have to kind of adapt to what we're doing contemporarily, right? So I had to work on uh, getting the language right and uh, th there had to be times when you, you cannot uh, transliterate it, right? It had to be the, the contextually also and theatrically. So it's not, it's it's much more than translate, like translating a short story or translating a book or translating a news article. In the play, you you uh, you have to actually read it, read it many times over, and say and hear how it sounds. Uh, so there is a certain rhythm, there's a certain meter which the original playwright has maintained, which uh, it becomes necessary um, on the part of the translator to uh, bring it out. So those those are mainly the challenges. So without going into specific details, I would like to say that you know the uh, I I have. D done done my best to maintain the authenticity of tone and um, the context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's 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 great to know because you know last few years mm -hmm. when we've seen um, Dr. Farley present things like Pride and Prejudice, mm -hmm. which was also a very ancient story, but when he changed it, he still could do it in English without changing any ref references, without yeah. changing any you know, nuances of those characters. So right. we are very excited and we are looking forward to your play because I'm sure um, we would like to see something similar. And I have heard a lot of stories about that. And one more question that I have for you is I've seen you act, I've seen you on the stage before. Um, would you rather act or would you rather direct? 
It's, it's, <laughs> it's a very tricky question to answer if you are both. And I um, am both. So, you know, I always want to know what your pick. See, acting, uh, uh, I, got, I got into theater as an actor. Mm -hmm. Right? So I always have that special uh, talk towards acting. But then more than directing, I think writing is something I enjoy more. You know? So I, in fact, in my usually my plays when I write, I would like to see other, other directors take a stab at it and see how they do it, how they interpret my lines. Um, I direct only when I want, when I'm, I have something in my mind that I want to do with my script. Only then I direct what I, what I have written. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, a play has to really um, move me quite a bit, quite a, a big deal for me to uh, want, want to direct it. Uh, I love acting and I love writing. And I think both of them um, uh, come from the same uh, part of the, part of my mindset mm -hmm. where, where I have this, um, yearning to get into the shoes of the audience and find out what they think and how they think and what's the what's the best way we can uh, present a story. Okay. Yeah. So that, are, you, are you acting in this play as well or not? Yes, I am. And I, I play a very important character in this play. Okay. That's what I thought. So, no, I think we are very excited because I, I don't think I've seen your Canada play on Vibrations, mm -hmm. but um, what I've heard so far and would definitely be very, very intrigued and interested in seeing how you kind of get that out in English. So uh, thank you so much um, for being here today. And I think we just want to let people know what you do, how you do it, and what's your thought process. So that kind of connects the audience more with you and what you have to bring uh, to the theater. And I think this kind of meaningful conversation is very very important for us and for everybody else so that we can connect to the audience before they are like they almost like prime them for what to expect from a person like yourself and other directors so that they can kind of come prepared to kind of indulge into what you have to offer so thank you so much Anand. Uh, thank you very much Manoj I'm equally time. excited and uh, this the uh, I know I'm very excited to uh see what my team is going to do. We have a fantastic team. I'm very proud of the uh, team that I put together. Uh, have some very good actors and uh, I have also included um, a dance element into it where we have interpretive dance set against Vedic chants, which is something okay. very rare and I'm very uh, happy with how it's turning out to be. Mm -hmm. so, very, I'm, no, I'm very, very excited. Very excited. Yeah, and I'll invite uh, Ashok Ji back again. Um, so we can thank you and the team um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you on 20th of August. Thank you so very much, Anand. And I still remember uh, watching Sampata Dharma uh, during our uh, COVID eras. So looking forward to um, see this play. This is fantastic play. As you mentioned, I love that play uh, when I saw that uh, in our vibration episodes. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Manoj Shahane, for conducting this uh, wonderful interviews. And on behalf of Indian Heritage and Cultural Organization, I would like to thank Mana TV International for hosting these episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.